Hello and welcome to our channel. My name is Balram Prasad and I am working with Microsoft as a senior software engineer. In this video, we are going to see how to create an Azure SQL database and how to connect with SQL Server Management Studio and Azure Data Studio. For this demo, we are into Azure portal and inside the source group. Let's go ahead and click on create and try to search with SQL and SQL database. So we will see few options. We are going to select SQL database. So SQL database is a cloud database service built for application developer. Let's go ahead and click on create. Now we have to put the database name. I'm going to put that this demo we have few of servers already uh, but i'm going to create a new server so let's see <coughs> and this is in east us location and i'm going to enable both authentication right now it says that this specified server is already in use so i'm going to say that software api demo and then we are going to use this uh, both SQL and AD authentication. So I'm going to put the name for main details. I'm going to click OK. So it is saying that one who is going to be Azure AD admin. So I'm going to set up an Azure AD admin. Let me search. I'm going to put this. I'm going to click on OK. Now it is asking for review, but before we review that one, I wanted to see that one that what is compute in database storage, it is right. We didn't talk about much on that side kind of workload we wanted to have either we want to have this elastic pool or not right now we are not going with elastic pool and workload environment let's keep that production and then we can go to configure database section to see that what other options we have so right now general purpose is most budget friendly serverless compute we can go with we can go for hyperscale business critical need and also we can go for different pricing model this is v core based pricing model right now it is this another one is dtu based pricing model so basic for less demanding workload where we can see that uh, if we have test or development servers we can use this one basic and other things uh, standard and premium so i'm going for basic one where I do not have to maintain that lot of different things. I can specify that what is that DTU I need and you can go and see that what is the DTU and other thing, how it is going to be charged, but it is uh, budget friendly, so that is okay. And what is the max data size we want to have? Two GB I want to have because this is the max limit and we know that I am not going to expand two DB. We can see $5 only it is going to cost per month. We can go ahead into a standard and where we are going to see that it is going to charge on 14 dollar around but it depends upon that how much dpu i want to use and that's how it is going to increase by tons of money right so i am going to and if you go into v core model then also you are going to charge based on how much v core you are going to use so i'm not going for v core i'm going for basic one with only 2 gb which i'm going to apply and then right now I know how the backup will be there so right now we have three options right lrs which is locally redundant backup storage zone redundant and geo redundant for production related thing we should go for geo redundant backup solution for dev and other things we could go for locally so that's how it is costing if we choose the geo redundant so right now if you see that one that costing did you select it it is not impact much for our selection but uh, once we will go for a little bit more details it will start costing a little bit depending upon how much DTU is going to use on geo redundant if you are going to enable for read only and other details so right now i'm going for locally redundant and in networking section 
we have few options right we have no access public endpoint in private endpoint for more security we should go for private endpoint and i will create another video where we will see that how to create private endpoint and trials that one how to access if any sql server are inside private endpoint right now i'm going with public endpoint and when we select the public endpoint we have to say that some firewall rules where we have to allow azure services and resources to connect if not then we will be not able to access that one and if we wanted to add our current IP address. So for that, I'm going to do right now both yes, and then how the connection policy. So whatever default connection policy is there, I'm going to keep that one. What is the TLS version we want to use? That uh, 1.2 is recommended and we should use that for security purpose. So I'm going in next in security right now. We are not using laser and other things because we do not need that one. For identity, we can, configure the identity and generally we should go for system managed identity we can attach user my managed identity and other details also but let's go for system managed identity and td which kind of data encryption we want to use that right now it is service managed key you can configure by your own key also that right now we are not going to do so let's go for additional setting so how the data source will be there do you want to create a blank database or you want uh, you have any backup or you want to restore that one or you want to use any sample database so for now i'm going to create none and i'm going to create a basic blank database which we will see that how to create any tables and how to use that one so maintenance window we do not have much option this is system default right now we can go for tagging where we have to provide more details that what tags we want to apply and we are creating two resources that is why it is to select a two resources sql database and sql server it is going to create now i'm going to create this resource so let's click on create So our SQL database resource has been created. Let's go to resource. Now we can see all the details here. Now for looking into more details, we can go to query editor and we can try to connect that. I have added AD as a different account because this Hotmail account can't be as AD. It should be under that denant. So I'm going to put my password whatever I password I kept for this DB and now I can go ahead and view tables and other things so I do not have any view or table right now created so I am going to create one new table let's create one table called create table and I am going to create this table it got created and I, ref I can refresh this panel and I can see that now I have that and I can try to edit data from that place also that now new record and I can put whatever name I want to put and then I can save this is how we can do and also if we go inside select we can select and all the details we can do now if we want to connect with uh, this one from local and other things we have few tools we have sql server management studio right sql server management studio and there is another tool also so let me go ahead and we have azure data studio also uh, so there are two tools right now we use generally so let's go ahead and i will download that one so right now this is free sql server management studio it's sms so let's see that and let me download that tool and i am also going to download this azure data studio let me click on the download now and if i go i can go for user installer uh, 64 bit Let me open that SSMS one. And because we have clicked previously also, it is asking for double type. So I closed one. 
it is going to install so let's click on install to download it but it is going to install azure uh, sql server management studio with azure data studio so they have clubbed both of the tool in one now so now beginning with sql server this version 18.7 azure data studio is technically installed alongside the sms so whatever benefit it is going to be azure data studio that is going to happen azure data studio is generally cross-platform open source desktop tool right it is not for only windows and this ssms was for only windows so if we are working from windows you can use this tool or if you are working from another one you can use that now it is going to install so now let's go and close that one let's open management Now we can go ahead inside our portal. Open that to get the connection string. Because I have logged in different credential with AD, so I'm not going to use AD. I'm going to connect with details where we have. So I'm going to participate. I need to SQL server authentication. I am not going to use other authentication, AD and other things for managed identity details. We are not using right now. So I am going to keep that uh, SQL server authentication and we can see that what is our DBA, what is our username password. So we can go, I can grab and password I can put that. Let me connect. Now we can go ahead and see our database. Now we can do full operations from here from SQL Server Management Studio by doing, creating tables, dropping, and writing a stored proc. Whatever way we want to use SQL Server, we can go ahead and do that one. Let me try to see that if Azure Data Studio is also installed. So this Azure Data Studio is also installed. So let's click on that. Now we can go ahead and create a connection. New connection, we have Microsoft SQL Server. We can go ahead and put and instead of Windows, we are not using AMFA right now, so I'm going with SQL login and I'm going to put the SQL for more details. At that, I'm going to use my password. This setting will be default. I'm going to connect this. So it is saying that restart for update. I will do later update. So this is how this tool looks. This is familiar tool. This is SQL Server Management Studio, which is very cool tool, which we generally were using from connecting with SQL Server Express, SQL Server On-Prem or SQL Server Azure and doing a lot of operations using this tool. And now this is tool which is cross-platform where, where we can go and click on that and we can see all the details here also. We can go ahead and Select query, write query, all these details. We can write new notebook feature also because there are a lot of new features supported inside Azure SQL. So we can do that also. So this is how it uh, looks like and we can go expand all this from databases, demo and tables. We can go ahead and create new table by using designer from SQL Server as from azure data studio and same thing if we wanted to go and do from our sql server management studio then also we can create a new table from designer mode instead of writing query if you wanted to do that one both supports that one so it is loading right now designer so let me restart because update was there so that might be causing this one so let so one of the good feature in azure data studio which we have 
that integration with a source control. So if you see that we have integration with source control. So whatever query we want to read, write, we can store directly from here to uh, source control. That also flexibility is there. Asking it. So new designer came now and we can see that all the details we can set up using UI itself and also we can see that uh, that all the data and we can insert with all more data here if you wanted to do. So that is how this UI supports and there are few more things like in notebook we can have notebook we can have database project as we told that we, we can have that good part that source control so that is one good thing. So there are both tool we can use for different purposes also. I am not sure that right now here SQL Server SSIS related thing are there or not inside Azure Data Studio but we can double check that one. So this is how uh, this tool can be used for connecting to Azure SQL database and this is what I wanted to cover in this video. I hope you will like this video. Thank you.